My name is Paul, and I'm the Executive Vice President at JLL Hotels and Hospitality Group, um, looking after brokerage and investment sales. What a year 2020 was for hotel investment activity. I remember at TTF last year, we started the year for forecasting a pretty normal year for Thailand at around 10 to 12 billion baht of hotel transactions. And come March, uh, we had the pandemic that spread, um, the music stopped, and we only recorded about 15% of the, of the forecast um, transaction that we had. We're seeing improved sentiment year to date, and we're hopeful that the improved sentiment will continue throughout this year and we'll continue to see more, more activities. In this, in this presentation, we'll first look at the Asia-Pacific investment activity and then we'll, we'll, we'll go into Thailand as we go through the, the, the slides. A APAC recorded a decline by 59% in 2020, ending the year at 5.8 billion US dollars. What, what does this mean in terms of the global context? Globally, the volume declined by 63%, ending the year at 26 billion US dollars. The, the Americas led the decline by minus 69%, while EMEA followed um, at minus 60%. Next, this year, we're forecasting an uplift of around 20% uh, to 7 billion US dollars. And it's important to look at the quarterly data um, of 2020, and it may be a little bit misleading for Q1 and Q2, because you still had a lot of deals that were agreed prior to the pandemic that continued to close in Q1 and Q2, so the, so the, so the volumes were relatively high. But when you look at Q3 and Q4, taking out the, the one big transaction that took place in Taipei of around a billion US dollars by an insurance company, you would only see 400 million US dollars and 500 million US dollars in Q4. So very, very low levels, record low quarterly levels since the, pand since the crisis, um, um, the, the GFC crisis last year. What we've also done at the beginning of the year was we reached out to some of the more experienced hotel investors around Asia Pacific, and many of these would look at investments um, in Thailand. We had 84 respondents, and out of the 84, 70% said that they would look to acquire um, um, new hotels this year, while 20% uh, was neutral, and 10% said they would, um, they, they would adopt a wait-and-see approach. In terms of Thailand, as I mentioned, um, at the beginning of the year, we forecast 10 to 12 billion baht. Um, last year, we only saw 1.6 billion baht of um, transactions. Only three deals changed hands. And like the rest of Asia Pacific, these deals were agreed um, prior to the pandemic. Um, it's, it's worth noting that we have not included um, Four Seasons Bangkok, the sales of Four Seasons Bangkok and Capella Bangkok because we deem the, that to be related transaction, as well as the Peninsula Bangkok where the, the JV partner bought the other partner out. So that's not included in the 1.6. This year we've already seen um, two transactions um, accounting for about 1.1 billion baht. And of all the deals that JLL is involved with currently and is aware of, if 70% of these deals close, this would bring the volume up to about 8 billion. And if in the second half, uh, the investment um, environment continue to be positive and conducive, we believe the volume could be as high as um, 15 billion baht. In terms of the survey that I mentioned um, earlier, of the 84 respondents, um, it, it shows that there's still a significant gap between buyers' expectations and seller expectations. Buyers are seeking discounts of around 20, 30, 20 to 30%, the majority of them, while sellers, the majority are not sellers. And of the ones who are sellers, they, they are saying that they would look to consider at around a 10% discount from the pre-COVID levels. In terms of cap rate expansion, um, it, sh it showed a mixed picture. The majority um, are saying that they feel that there wouldn't be um, um, as much um, cap, rate, cap rate change. And of those who feel there will be cap rate movement, more are saying that there will be cap rate expansion versus the, the, the cap rate compression wh where there were only a few, a few respondents who, who felt that way. For Thailand, um, Bangkok, we believe, will see the least amount of um, cap rate expansion, if any, because of the high level of hotel capital chasing deals, deals in Bangkok. 
Phuket and Samui, we believe um, would, would see more expansion, given that it relies, they, they rely heavily on international um, tourist demand, and it will take a little bit longer for, for, for the recovery uh, to take place. In terms of access to debt, the majority has come back saying that their access to debt has deteriorated. And um, in terms of um, cost of debt, um, the majority um, said that there's no change in cost of debt. For those um, who feel there will be some movement, most uh, are feeling, more are feeling that there would be cap rate, um, interest rate increase as opposed to in interest rate um, decrease. The one notable factor we've, we've seen across uh, various conversations that we've had is the, lo um, the, the lower loan-to-low -low va uh, value ratio, and it can be significant um, in some markets. In this um, um, chart, what we've done was uh, we wanted to see um, the value impact that um, the various markets may have from the pandemic. And, and we looked at Bangkok as a comparison uh, with other city markets, as well as Phuket and Samui, in comparison with other resort markets. It's important to note that this was a theoretical exercise, so we were not able to factor in the supply and demand of each specific offering, because we, we were just working from the basic uh, market fundamentals, as well as the, 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 the cap rate expansion variable. So the two variables that have gone into this exercise was the, recover, the recovery period for each market and the cap rate expansion. If we were to keep one variable constant, which is cap rate expansion, and, and presume that there's no cap rate expansion, and only look at the recovery period for each uh, market, um, Bangkok would see around minus 10 to minus 15%. And other um, city markets that are more developed than Bangkok would see a lower value impact, lower value drop of say around minus five to minus 13%. Uh, For Osaka and Melbourne, because of the big supply of new hotels that may potentially come into the pipeline, we're seeing more or less the same um, in terms of value impact with Bangkok. And Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City and Jakarta, um, less um, um, developed um, uh, markets are seeing more value impact um, than Bangkok. In terms of Phuket and Samui, if there was no cap rate expansion, this would show around minus 15 to minus 22 percent. This is um, lower than, um, higher than o Okinawa, which has a high domestic um, um, content, but lower than Bali and the Maldives. Now, if we factor in the second variable, which is cap rate expansion, you would see the range um, in terms of the various colors. And um, they, they are also depicted uh, in the bottom in terms of 0 to 25 basis points expansion, um, 25 to 50, 50 to 100. And for Thailand, you see a range of around minus 10 to minus um, 30%. And Phuket and Samui, minus 15 to around minus 34%. But then again, like, like I said before, you know, we, we advised on a transaction in Sydney, you know, prime, prime assets, and we, we saw very little change uh, when the contracts exchanged in terms of value, only about 5% differential. And also, um, we're working on a, another transaction at the moment, again, in prime Sydney, where there, there was little change in terms of, in terms of value. So we feel that if, if the assets in those respective uh, markets are highly sought after, um, you could really push um, from, from a competitive um, campaign to try and achieve higher, higher um, um, value than what, than what is showing here. In terms of themes and, and investment outlook, um, we feel that the statement that best captures uh, the current market condition is the market is stressed, but it's not quite distressed. And in terms of buyers um, uh, we've been seeing, um, they tend to be PE funds as well as corporates and high net worth families who are less affected by COVID-19. Sellers tend to be large hotel owners who are divesting non-core and non-strategic assets, as well as sellers who are divesting out of um, hotel because it's not their core business. The gap between sellers is narrowing um, relative to 2020, and, and going forward, we expect to see more opportunities as the crisis prolongs, uh, more owners under pressure in Phuket and Samui than Bangkok, more investment activity, um, in 2021 with more hotels changing hands. Thank you.